Hey YouTube, what is up? It is me, Camilla. I am just here with my mirror doing a little makeup and I'm using my uh, my, my mirror for some lighting. So I'm, I'm following up with my video from yesterday. Oops, sorry, with that camera. A day in the life of a trans person. So I posted um, like what are some topics y'all would like to see me do. And I just like read some, of, I read them all, thank you. and. Um, I've had a lot of people request for um, multiple videos, like, why don't you talk about um, what is it like to pass in society as a trans woman for all intents and purposes. So obviously not everyone can tell I'm trans. A majority of people cannot. I know you're already typing in your comments how much a man I look like. That's cool. If you feel like that, be that way. I will delete hateful comments. But from my real experience in day-to-day -day life, um, I don't really consider it any different than any other person. Like a trans man's life probably isn't much different than a regular guy's um, life. A trans woman's life's not that much different from a natural natal born woman. Um, I do believe that we have to put a little bit more effort into our appearance. So for me, one of the things I did way back when was I got laser hair removal and I got um, some, uh, what was it called? Electrolysis. So I did like nine sessions cause I straight up did grow facial hair. And so like every six weeks I would have my face like burned, my neck and face burned with a laser. So like a lot of trans women that haven't had their facial hair removed, they're gonna start basically most days that they're going to go out, they're going to be applying some of uh, um, just a foundation and a powder um, just to hide their uh, stubble um, or five o'clock shadow, depending on how much facial hair you have. Um, so a lot of trans women spend more time on makeup. For me, I just put eyeliner on and some mascara and that's about it. Um, as far as like interacting with people, I would say that there's really no difference. Um, one thing is like, you always have that thought in the back of your head, like, does this person like, you know, what do they see me as when I'm, you know, but if I had to do that, if I had that thought with every person I interacted with, especially in work, like I work in retail um, in a department store selling women's clothing. And if I thought about that with every customer, I would literally just be thinking, does this person know I look like a guy or a girl or what do they think? I try not to put too much thought into it. I get called, I live in the South. So it's like, I live in Atlanta. A lot of people just call me ma'am. Yes, ma'am, no ma'am. Ma'am, uh, could I get some help? Or like, I've never been called sir. I've been working in my job for a long time. I haven't been called sir um, ever. So it's like, I'd like to think that I do pass pretty well and passing in society basically is not really that much different than a, reg a natal born female. Um, another thing that we have to do is we really have to coordinate outfits that um, help emphasize our good features and detract from our more masculine features. Like trans women usually have broader shoulders. So it's like, wearing outfits or tops or blouses or dresses or whatever you're going to wear and picking outfits out when you buy them. It's always so important to try on before you buy because a lot of clothes can make us look more square and more boxy. And we want to pick out outfits that accentuate our feminine side, our feminine features, whether that's like my chest. So it's like, um, I don't have very, uh, wide shoulders so that's not really an issue for me but as a whole um it's just like I don't know how to describe it but I feel like it's it's obviously different than a regular woman because I'm not a natal female um I would say that you know I don't think I've been in transition so long I don't really think about it unless like I'm on uh, social media or making YouTube videos talking about trans stuff at this point in my transition, I don't really think about it. Um, I think overall, like if I had can rewind 10 years in my brain and talk to you about what I did on, when I was first starting, 
I would say that usually like shopping would be a big thing, finding clothes that help with dysphoria. For me, like clothing shopping was a way to alleviate gender dysphoria. Um, and, and in every interaction, as more time goes on, the less you're going to worry, is this person able to clock me? Can this person, you know, are they going to call me he, him, or sir? Um, I don't worry about that anymore because it doesn't happen. The only place it happens is in these YouTube comments. In Reddit and in, in my daily life, like, or on my regular socials like IG or Facebook, people aren't kissing my ass and being nice. I know I'm, I'm a beautiful woman and that's not me being narcissistic. It's just, I literally did OnlyFans and made tens of thousands of dollars off of the way I look. And it's not because I'm a transsexual. It's not anything else other than I'm a passing trans woman. And I'm aware of that. You could say the most hateful things you want in the comments. It will not affect me. I will delete them because I state, as always, I'm trying to create a safe, positive learning space. And mean comments towards me may make viewers a little reluctant to comment. And I want people that are new to transition or that are just, you know, regular people that are just genuinely curious to feel comfortable without worrying about being lashed at uh, in the comment section by people that are just there to hate on me. Because a lot of people do, and I do delete comments, but like making these videos. So it's like dedicating several hours of my week towards uploading, um, talking, networking, responding to comments, um, coming up with ideas. That's why I asked throw some ideas at me yesterday was because sometimes I run out of topics and I don't know what non-trans people want to hear. I don't know what people who are just starting transition in today's day and age want to hear because when I started it, it was a whole different world back then. So it's like um, being a trans person, it's like basically the one thing I'll say is that you can find love. Um, I would say that it's more difficult regardless of how pretty you are, uh, unless you've had gender reassignment surgery. And even then, um, it can affect your dating and your romantic life. Overall, just because even if you're the prettiest trans girl in the world, you'll never be able to give a man children. That's like the bottom line issue I found. Um, I can go on a date with almost any straight guy that messages me on dating apps. It's not an issue. Um, it's retaining them and finding someone that's high value. So I look for a high value man because I see myself as a high value trans woman. I've spent over 10 years on, in medically transitioning. I've had cosmetic work done. I've done, you know, I've spent over $250,000 on my transition over a 12 year period. So for me to say like, I'm definitely not a low value trans girl. I'm, and I'm not being narcissistic, I'm just being real because I have lived my life, I've seen what's happened. When I first started, I constantly was misgendered. Um, people didn't know what to say. I could constantly feel the, like the reluctancy of, should I say sir or ma'am, like I don't know what to call this person. And I could almost feel people's thoughts and like children would stare at me if I was like out in public or at a mall. Children would stare at me, women would stare at me, a lot more than men who would never make direct eye contact. Then I made people uncomfortable and you spend several years of your life making people feel uncomfortable yeah, up to some people just naturally look great from the get-go but most people have to start from scratch and you're going to go through an awkward stage in your transition and you're going to get misgendered and it's important to build thick skin we see a lot of these people on TikTok, like in restaurants there's this viral thing about this trans woman that's like gets misgendered at a restaurant and this person is like, it's ma'am. It's like a stab in the heart when you call me, sir. It's like, I would never take my time if I'm out somewhere, like as a customer in a restaurant and someone called me, sir. Those people don't make enough to give a shit about my gender identity. I'm not going to even correct someone. I mean, if they see me as that, I haven't had that happen in a very long time. But even when it did happen, I wasn't out correcting people. Those people are making like minimum wage. Who am I to fucking interfere with that? But you see people like that just making a big deal out of 
being trans when there's really no big deal to be made. If you were born this way and felt gender dysphoria since you were little and it's never gone away and you're as old as I am at this point, I'm almost mid thirties. I've been feeling gender dysphoria for over three decades. I mean, it's nothing new. And a lot of these fake trans people that are doing this as part of a social contagion, um, I mean, they put a lot of stock into just that trans identity. Back when we started the OG trans, we didn't care. We fought to not have labels. We didn't want labels. Um, so basically one of the things I have to do on a daily basis on my own private social medias is like bite my tongue about these really liberal woke trans people that are like, you know, support us or, you know, you're a terrible person. And it's like, people are going to have difference of opinions. So I spent many days, many months and many years developing thicker skin, becoming resilient, um, working on my voice to an extent, like I went through puberty. I did go on Lupron from 11 to 14, but my voice did drop from 14 to like 19. It dropped a lot. So it's like, I always was working on my voice, body language, um, I mean, coordinating outfits, as I said, there's so much that goes into it. And I wanna end this video on a positive note but i want to before i get into the end i'm going to talk i'm not going to say any names but uh, it's really going viral this non-binary teen um that we don't even know uh the, there's no toxicology reports that are available yet uh the you know the trans community is saying this person got assaulted and they died the next day from an injury when the, they were out the hospital perfectly fine. I have Meniere's disease. I've fallen. I've cracked my head open. I don't know how many concussions I've had in my life from falls. And I highly doubt this person really got, um, I really doubt that she died from, you know, a fight in the bathroom. I do believe that there's probably going to be something comes out with the toxicology report that'll explain everything. And it's not my place to say, I mean, I'm still guessing just as much as the rest of the world is, but, um, you know, non-binary wasn't a thing when I started transitioning. It literally didn't exist. So it's really hard for people like myself to take the trans community serious. So a majority of my time is spent staying away from social media or staying away from trans people on social media because they're just constantly like, they're like, fuck Israel. They're like, you know, pro, um, it, it, they're all pro Gaza. And it's like, if those people were not doing that, the people in Gaza do not like trans people. Why the fuck are you supporting them? And I'm not trying to get into politics really, but it's almost impossible to be trans without politics in today's day and age. So I've refrained from being political. Um, I found that it is almost easier to not voice my views. I am conservative, wink, wink, I am. But I mean, it's really hard to watch all of this change in my community. When I first started, I thought when, in 10 years and 15 years, hopefully the community will be more accepted and it's actually less accepted now than it was when I started. So the liberal woke uh, ideology, the trans narrative is being forced on the straight world. And that's not a, you can't force that ideology on people that cannot empathize without the ability to empathize because they're not experiencing transsexuality, gender identity issues, or gender dysphoria. You can't expect them to understand and you never will. You could write a book this thick and talk till you're blue in the face. They're never going to relate. So quit trying. Um, you know, it's just try to be yourself and pick outfits that make you feel good. Make your hair look nice. Do your makeup. Do self-care. Do things that you enjoy. Find a job you like that you feel respected in. That, and work on, you know, getting called the right pronouns whether that's, you know, cosmetic work or waiting till next year to get the right insurance plan. That you I mean you have the rest of your life. And that's one thing that people in the trans community that are just starting today in today's day and age don't realize they've got the rest of their life. What's the need to rush? There's really no need to rush this. 
And like I state in all my videos, I truly do believe medical transition um, from trying to live from one gender to the next is a last resort and it's a medical treatment option. I think that should only be made available to people that are dying from crippling gender dysphoria. And I think that to really recognize gender dysphoria, it's like you have to be 21 in the United States to smoke or drink. I don't think you're really old enough to make that decision before you're in your early 20s. I mean, even 18, that's really young for someone to make, you know, sterilize themselves and all the stuff that goes into this. So just in the day in the life of a trans person is absolutely no different than a regular person's. We just have to put extra work into our presentations and our thoughts and constantly working on our voices or our presentation just, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a, I'm not, I would say it's not a play, it's not copying, it's being ourselves, but it's important to blend in. Um, if this video has taught you anything, go ahead and subscribe because I'd be happy to teach you more and share more on um, my next video. Uh, please like this video if you've enjoyed and watched this far. This is kind of an all around video all over the place. But this is like, you know, there's so much going on in the trans community right now. And I'm, you know, kind of not really a part of it. But um, yeah, just keep tuning in my videos. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this helps. I'll see y'all next time.